Hello, this is Riding with Ree. Welcome back to my channel, or welcome if you are new here. In today's video, we are finally going for a lesson on a mechanical horse. This is something that I have wanted to book for myself for a very long time now, and I have finally booked myself in to a local riding school with an international Grand Prix dressage rider. So I'm going to take you with me. It's going to be very in depth. I'm going to show you as much of the session as possible, including all of the stuff that I'm currently getting wrong with my riding, and then the exercises that we do afterwards to try and sort of help mediate some of that. Quick Woody update first. He's gone lame again earlier this week, unfortunately. I'm really at a loss as to what is causing this lameness, as is my coach. There's nothing obvious, so unfortunately we're gonna have the vet out later this week, but I will, of course, keep you updated. All right, let's dive into this week's video. I have arrived, I'm just sat in my car. Um, I have a few extra spare minutes, so I'm just gonna take a minute to breathe. For some reason this morning, I thought I had less time than I did, and I thought I was in a rush, but I wasn't. So went to the yard, saw Woody, gave my boots a quick clean. I typically did not have time for breakfast this morning, and I hate doing stuff like this on an empty stomach, so I brought one of my wife food drinks with me. This is actually the cacao flavor from the non-vegan range, so I've shown you a lot of the vegan range. This is the non-vegan range, there's a lot more of them. There is banana, cacao, coconut, which you don't get in vegan range, um, cold brew coffee. These are amazing. They have 26 vitamins and minerals. They are high in protein. The bottle is 100% recyclable with um, climate neutral packaging and they are perfectly designed to be a meal. So they're not a diet drink um, and they also designed to reduce waste. So I love these. I've been using them now every time I have a day out with the horses or I'm at the yard for a significant period of time. If you do want to try out Y Food for yourself, there is a discount code here. There is a link up here and I'll also put the link to them in the description. Yeah, right. Let's go ride a mechanical horse. Right, so when mounting these ones, you're mm -hmm. going to get on without putting your foot in the stirrup. So. Okay. So swing over. Okay. He's not going I'm anywhere. Like <laughs> all the good uh, good training well try this if you find that once you've warmed up a little bit you know i think you're kind of you're in this to maybe one longer okay. is your normal range yeah. so if it starts to feel a little bit short yeah squeak or once we've loosened you up and everything yeah okay. we'll get you. <laughs> the walk is probably the least like the rest of the paces, okay. so it's the one that you kind of it takes a few minutes to get used to, which is why I get you on there. We chat while you're walking, so yeah. your body just goes, okay, it's all right. Yeah. Obviously, for beat the rhythm in the walk with the yeah. back doing a lot of undulating, this is a solid piece of plastic that can rock side to side. Yeah. So if you think about like you're just sitting on the horse's bum rather than the horse's back, okay. it suddenly becomes less wild. So right, you're, okay, you're, yes. Yeah. <laughs> so you're yeah. just riding the hind legs rather than riding the whole thing. Okay, bit of asymmetry you were telling me about? Yeah, so... Whilst I give Sarah a little overview of my asymmetry journey, let me give you a little overview of her. Sarah is an international Grand Prix dressage rider and coach. Turning pro when she was 23, Sarah has represented Canada in FEI competition at Grand Prix level, both at home and abroad, worked and trained with many Olympic athletes, and is pursuing her own goals of competing at the Olympics and World Equestrian Games. It is such a privilege to have her working in Surrey and be able to book her for lessons like this. I also noticed when I checked out her social media that she follows Andy Thomas, who I've previously done symmetry work with, and a saddler who I really respect for her symmetry work. So it definitely felt like we had similar schools of thought when it came to this sort of thing. Let's have a quick look at you. So I'm gonna put you into a slightly bigger walk now that okay. you look like you're breathing again. <laughs> and then we'll go from the walk, we'll go up to the canter, which is his best gate. And that's the most loosening, obviously. And we'll do a canter left to the canter right. Then we'll come back down to a little trot. Then we'll do your center panel, and that will give us a lot more of a reading of, of where we're at today. Okay. Horses care most about consistency. Yeah. So you know, a rider that sits always a little tiny bit to the right, it's going to impact the horse, but at least they're there, versus a rider who sits to the right, except when they hop over to the left, yeah, and then yeah, they sit back okay. to the right. It's actually probably going to be more balanced than we suggested. Right, I'm going to pop you up into canter. Can't skip trot, so there's going to be a couple of balancing steps in between. Okay. Yeah, so, uh, uh, he's, he's like he's very lovely and up, uh, he's upright, isn't he? Yeah. On his forehand. <laughs> on his forehand, totally rhythmical, easy swing to it. So now you have right counter. That feels quite odd. I feel I, now I feel quite unbalanced. Yeah. So he does have a little bit more of a camber in his right counter than he does in his left mm -hmm. one. 
but again, your right leg that should be stabilizing you right now doesn't like to do its job. Mm, yes. So then, yeah, yeah so then you have to kind of hook yourself on the left side a little bit. Right, right, and so you're going to feel side. like you're being pulled over to the right yes, because yes. your left leg's going, ah, yes. yes. Okay. Versus the right side going, we're here. Yes. I mean, ultimately what we want to be is about kind of effort to just sit yeah you know, just, as much of that as being kind of unconscious effort rather yeah. than than you having yeah, to consciously think about right. where yeah. you're putting yourself um, and yeah when we're when we're really trying we can actually make things worse <laughs> I've definitely become overly uh, aware of it yeah um, good I'm gonna take you back down to try yeah and it's really hard to do rising try you're welcome to try it his try a sitting trots are not so difficult okay. so and just I'll a little bit of that Okay, so this is going to go, he's going to run you through a two minute panel. So mm -hmm. he's going to do 30 seconds of walk, mm -hmm. then he'll go up to trot, he'll do 30 seconds of trot, he'll pick up canter left, do 30 seconds of that, do a flying change, and then he'll come back uh, and do 30 seconds of canter right, okay. and then he'll come back down to halt. Sometimes slightly unceremonious. <laughs> yeah, just kind of boom. Okay. <laughs> the other thing is, he has rain sensors. Oh. They're set at um, riding school level. So I'd like you to pull a little bit harder than you normally would. Not to the point that you end up kind of bracing and going into that one, but just have a bit more contact. Because I think with the level he's set to, your hands are gonna turn up as looking perfect. Mm -hmm. And I suspect that, you know, it's, it's like with every level of sensitivity, yeah. they're probably not quite there and it would be useful to see which hand you like to go to a little bit more. Right, so I'm going to ping this over to you, okay. and that way you've got this one for tracking. So basically, the nice thing, or one of the nice things about this one, is that it allows us to track over time your mm. progress. So if we yeah. look at this one, this is plotting your center of gravity on the placement of the cell, and then that's plotted on a graph left and right, and front and back. Mm. So on a left and right basis, because you tend to tip a little bit, so so if I watch you from behind, you're a little bit this way. Mm. So because of that one, the head actually has a bigger impact on your center of gravity. So even though there's more of you to the left and the fix is actually to get your pelvis to the right a little bit more, yeah. right now, the overall center of gravity is a little bit to the right mm -hmm. as a tendency. So walk, you're pretty centered. But like I said before, when I saw it, looks pretty good. Mm -hmm. Trot, it starts to shift. And then in both your canter left and your canter right, although less in your canter right, so actually the place where it would be better to sit right, you're sitting more in the middle versus sitting to the left, you're sitting a bit, your weight is actually to the right. Interesting. Okay. Mm. If we track you on a front to back basis, what I'm looking for is that it stays roughly on one line, yeah? Mm -hmm. And that's not too bad here. Um, so what we'd like to see, particularly in the walk and the canters, is we'd like to see nice smooth lines. So right. this one doesn't look too, too bad. You are really not super concerned with how you're sitting the walk at the moment. Trot's a bit unstable, but yeah. I think you, you go and recruit your thigh muscles a lot to sit rather than going and accessing your core. And I think that's one of the areas that we'll work on today. And then your stabilization of your hip swing. So your rhythm in your canter actually looks pretty good, mm -hmm. but you've got a lot of movement front and back, and particularly there's the occasional where you get left behind essentially right, in the yeah, canter. Yeah, yeah. Clay. And, and this, is, this is that. Is this like hip to shoulder movement? Well, this will or be this, what you're doing in the canter, ah, okay, or this one, that, yeah. Okay. On your rain sensors, um, your left hand's perfect, <laughs> and your right mm -hmm. rein you pull harder. So there's a thin yellow line here in the middle, and the difference from that one is how much pressure. So your left one's reading is nothing, oh, and the right one you've got more. Now horses in general, about 95% of them will naturally from birth take more weight into a right rein mm -hmm. than a left one. So it may be that that's trained because based on the rest of your compensating pattern, I expected you to be heavier than your left. Yeah, and I feel like I, to be fair, I feel like when I ride, I am. Mm. So, well, when I ride Woody, I am. Yeah. So that is odd, but I don't. I, mean, I suspect I don't. you might just lock that arm. Yes, yeah, so I think and that's so it just right. stays consistent versus yeah, the right hand's a little bit on and off. The legs are the biggest place we're seeing things. Yeah. So even in walk, as we start to go into transition, your left leg goes into I will hold you. So you've basically got driving motion with the left leg pushing almost the whole time. Oh yeah, God. so anytime you've got one of these sensors lighting up, in the right canter you had a lot of right leg tapping as well. So essentially your legs are on a lot. So for me, I think what we need to try and do is we need to get your hips a little bit looser so that your spine can sit a little bit better and we can get access to your core and try and soften those thighs. Okay. Um, 
I think you, you've done the work with Andy already and activating that gluteus medius and doing the activations he showed you before you ride is going to make a big, big difference for you. Okay. Because right now that right side isn't working hard enough. Mm -hmm. So what I'll do is I'll do a slight mounted activation for you right now. Okay. Then we'll do some balls, get you loosened up and hopefully get you that feel of what it should feel like. Mm -hmm. The balls, it will last for about a week or so, the, the after effect of it. So hopefully it should give you a chance to get a couple of rides in so that you can really lock in where your seat needs to be okay. a bit more. And then from there, we can build from that okay. if we get to see you again. Oh, my poor pony. <laughs> Do you know, I've seen an awful lot worse than this. Okay. Yeah, but there's definitely, I think the big one is thinking, actually I'm using my legs for stability far more than they should be doing. Mm. What I want to do is test the, the, the glute knee strength. So I want you to bring this part of your heel out to my hand that's out here. So you're here. And now push that part out. Come on, give it a pinch. There you go. Where are you feeling now? Um, weirdly in this side of my knee. Okay. And yeah. Yeah, it's down here. Perfect. Yeah. Okay, and soften. And I'm going a little bit further back. Now. Oh, oh that okay. Yeah, and out. Is that taking the knee pressure off? Yes. Good. So it's just in the bum now? Yes. Yeah, good. Keep going, come on. There you go. It's nice, isn't it? That's yeah, the strong really cool. leg. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that What's that? No, that's fine. Oh, okay. Yeah. So coming a little bit back and then yeah. out. No leaning. No leaning. Come on, push. No, you're leaning. Oh. Yeah, you got nothing, right? You got nothing. <laughs> So what we're looking for is I'm not worried about how much you can push into the hand because I already know it's weaker, but I want you to find the point where this yeah. pin points, yeah? yeah? So I'm coming further back now, mm -hmm. yeah? And out. Oh God. Okay. Is I it pinging? I can feel it. Yeah, good. I mean, you've got no power. Nothing at all. Yeah. And my left leg is like forward. Desperately <laughs> trying to do something to help you. And you're kind of, you're tipping your body over to the left and all sorts of fun things are happening. Oh it's softened. Have you sat on the Franklin ball before? No. Okay, so you're getting a lot of firsts <laughs> today. So the nice thing with the Franklin ball is all about the after effect. So okay. this is gonna be upregulating your proprioception and hopefully just loosening things off. So we do not care how pants you look on this thing. <laughs> yeah. You do not have to show this online, yeah? Okay. Um, most people look better, okay. yeah, but it's still, it, no one's going to judge you on it. You're going to do it for about two minutes. So okay. your job is to do feeling, yeah? I know that's not your strength, but <laughs> we're going we're gonna to do that. I know you're going to be like thinking, 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 yeah, yeah, trying yeah, yeah, to yeah. feel, yeah? So you're, what I'm going to ask you to do is you're going to sit on it and I want you to describe what you're feeling. Okay. Yeah? So you're just going to go pommel and cantle and you're going to have a seat bone on either side. Okay. You should feel reasonably upright or slightly tipped forward. Okay. If you feel tipped backwards, we've got it in the wrong spot. Okay. That's it. <laughs> you're like, oh, no, I don't like it. <laughs> it's all different. Yeah, just wait till the movie. You ready? Oh, God. Yep. Yeah. Oh, I feel upright. Yeah. Um, I feel freer through here. Yeah. So um, you can stop pulling up now. You don't have to push it down. Just there, like that. So your job again. So channel, channel a little bit of a sack of potatoes, but with a good tight sack. <laughs> yeah. And so this one is unfortunately less comfortable to sit on, but again, we're on it for a couple of minutes. Yeah, it'll feel like a bad bicycle seat. So you're gonna have pommel and cantal, seat bones and pubis. Okay. If it hurts, it's too far forward. Now I'd be inclined to say that you're going to want to sit actually harder in it than you than you should do because I think you're used to turning mm -hmm. your pelvis that way anyway. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But again, if it if we're we're not looking for intense pain, we're looking for minor discomfort. Yes, that's fine. Okay. It feels so odd, but yeah, absolutely. Now have a look in the mirror. Oh. Yeah. Funny, I think I did it all the time. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Who cares about the pain? Look, I look awesome. Okay. <laughs> it's like high heels and stilettos in there. Okay. <laughs> so again, try letting go. You're already thinking and adjusting, and then, 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 and let it do its job. Just gonna give you first a little bit of a tapping over each leg, and then I'm gonna stick the balls underneath your knees, and just get you a little bit more on your seat bones, and again, your job is to feel and to let go. Yeah? Yes. <laughs> so much harder than it sounds. I, I, isn't it just? Because it's not like <laughs> <a game. laughs> So again, what we're doing here is getting the proprioception up, 
So we're waking up all the parts of your body to connect your, your, your body to your brain. Because I think we spend so much time thinking and not enough time being, and I'm equally guilty, and especially everybody who gets drawn to dressage tends to be that type oh, of yeah. way. Yeah, that, that we all love this kind of a, a component to it, and we're thinking and we're trying and we're striving and we're striving and we're striving, and actually we're just not actually in our bodies. Yeah. And horses spend their whole life in their bodies. And for reasons that I don't totally understand, it works a little bit better if somebody else does it, but you can also do this for yourself. So mm -hmm. if you're kind of going, okay, I don't have control of this body part, give it a little gentle tapping, mm -hmm. ideally with some sort of like ball or rolled up towel or something like that. And that can really help. Ooh, that's tight. <laughs> right. Do they feel about the same spot? Yeah. Good, here we go. So again, all your job is to do is to sit and to feel. No, you do what you do with tipping. Just sit and feel. You're like, no, I'm going to make it more comfortable. <laughs> I saw you. <laughs> so you're getting a much better wrap around effect with your leg right now. Now, that's not saying we want to have your knees as the yeah, inch yeah. extra out, but this is just to try and give you a little bit of an idea that we need to soften those thighs, put your pelvis in the right spot, yeah. have that right side working a little bit harder, and a lot of the other efforts that you're making will not need to be there yeah. because you're correcting for the fact that you're starting from a, a, from an asymmetric base. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Yeah. If I get the pleasure of working with you again, mm -hmm. we'll go through really setting up, you know, probably put the band on, really get you set into that position. Mm -hmm. I'll probably apply a little bit of taping as well to try and help you with your back. Yeah. But I think the big one is just finding presence into your pelvis and letting go a little bit. Mm -hmm. yeah? yeah? So have a little feel of this. Turn the leg senses off, so if you go shooting forward, it's your fault. Yeah. We're going to go up to a bigger walk. So your leg senses are these ones here, the left one, left one, the right one. We're looking for those ones to not get lit up, yeah? So going up into chalk. Now I know that you can't see the screen here, but this was very interesting. So there are three sensors on each side of the horse on the screen, uh, the front, the middle and the back. And you'll remember from the diagram that my left leg was on completely and my right leg was tapping on and off. This time after doing the exercises, my left leg didn't light up the screen at all. And my right leg tapped maybe three times. It was really, really impressive. Squeezing harder with your legs to try and sit in the middle is not gonna serve you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah? Yeah. Any questions? That was brilliant. That was brilliant. Um, I spotted a little cafe on the village just past here as I drove down. So I'm gonna go and grab a coffee and then let's debrief. We are heading over there. So I'm just sat on the edge of a very picturesque lake with a coffee that I almost just spilt everywhere getting set up for this shot um, but I did want to do a little debrief uh, so that was really really interesting and actually just as I left the riding school I walked past a girl having a lesson and she was learning her diagonals and it made me feel so like inspired there were two schools there was one girl learning diagonals and there was a boy having another lesson I don't know what it was about but it made me feel really inspired because I think once you start looking into these things and you start to see all the things that are wrong with your position and your riding and whatever, you can start to feel a bit disheartened. And so I made the joke to Sarah, I was like, God, I wish I'd never looked into this stuff because, you know, I think uh, I could have been a lot freer without. But honestly, I'm so glad. I'm definitely going to go back. I think I'd looked into a few uh, simulators and I really wanted one with the screen because I think being able to see exactly where you're putting pressure on and off and where you're leaning on and off is really important. I expected her to tell me, okay, you're leaning this way and you're leaning this way and so you need to do X, Y, Z. Firstly, she told me that the, um, the exercises that I've been taught by Andy Thomas months ago, I really needed to be doing those, which I'm not. So more for me, I thought perhaps if I just was in the gym doing well, I wouldn't need them. But what really surprised me was actually when she was starting to fix me with putting balls in specific places and moving my body, 
I was like fixing my body and she said to me you've spent so long and so much time and energy trying to fix your position that now you're like you are kind of fixed and she said you're compensating for things and she said if we can just get you to relax into the movement a bit more she was like it will be so much easier for you she was like you're working really hard and I guess I just didn't expect to feel like when I did finally go oh yeah I need to just release I didn't I sort of I didn't expect that I'll be honest I sort of thought that I was fixing all the right things and so to have her say that actually when I relax is when I do my best riding which is really interesting so I'm really pleased I'm really looking forward to seeing how um, it translates when I'm back on Woody. So that is it. Thank you so much for watching this week's video. If you have any questions or comments, do add those below. And uh, thank you so much for watching. I will see you next Friday, which is actually Christmas Eve, if you celebrate at 4 p.m. GMT for quite a special video that you have been hounding me about for a very long time. I'll see you then. Bye for now.